With 15 million Americans suffering from alcohol use disorder, it's safe to say that the current methods of treatment are not working as effectively as they could. This makes Awaken Life Sciences' recent announcement of an MOU with the NHS such a pivotal move in the adoption of ketamine-assisted psychotherapy. CEO Anthony Tennyson joins the Dales Report to celebrate. Anthony Tennyson, CEO of Awaken Life Sciences. It's good to see you again. We were just in Miami together. It's good, good to see you again. And yeah, we were in Miami. It was uh, it was a great it was a great conference. Um, it was great to see just the industry peers to interact with actual humans, which was nice as opposed to screens. Absolutely, it, it was just great. It was the energy and the fact that we've got so many people committed to working together to solve some of society's biggest problems yeah. is actually just. It's a, it's a great place to be. It's a great time to be. It is. So and, and, and you're coming out of that energy into some other momentum, um, some good news. So, so an MOU uh, with the NHS. And, and just for anybody that doesn't understand those acronyms right off the bat, what we're really talking about is a Memorandum of Understanding, which is a formal agreement with the NHS, which is the National Health Service. So what exactly does this mean? And why is it an important milestone for Awaken? <laughs> Um, so, so what it means is it, it's pretty significant. The NHS is the United Kingdom's national healthcare service. It's, it's aside from Brazil, it's the second largest, the largest purchaser of health services in the world is the Brazilian national healthcare. The UK is the second largest purchaser of healthcare services in the world. That means it's bigger than any any individual purchaser in the US. It's the single biggest purchaser, the second biggest purchaser of healthcare services in the world with an annual budget of $200 billion. Um, so it's a bit of a big deal that we've signed a memorandum of understanding with them. The purpose of the memorandum of understanding is to assess and improve the operational readiness of the NHS to deliver ketamine assisted psychotherapy for addiction and for mental health. So it's kind of big because they're huge, but also there is now an acknowledgement within the NHS that ketamine assisted psychotherapy has the ability to be more effective at treating addiction and also mental health than anything that they currently do. Um, and they want to work with companies like us, or they want to work with us to understand this better so that they are better positioned to deliver these services within their infrastructure or to refer their patients to us or their clients to us in due course when we or others secure on label use for psychedelics to treat addiction and mental health. Mm, okay. So there, so there's a range of projects in the scope, uh, in the MOU, but one of the key items then is to progress uh, a soon to be published phase two of the care study. And, and just so people know what that is, that's ketamine for reduction of alcohol relapse. C correct. So that study, that trial is a is phase two AB combined trial, Nicole. It's the only trial, first trial in the world to assess ketamine assisted therapy in a treatment for alcohol use disorder. There has been other research as ketamine as a medicine alone, or as a drug alone, to treat alcohol use disorder. This is the first time that ketamine-assisted therapy has gone through a trial uh, to, to treat alcohol use disorder. Um, the results will be published in the American Journal of Psychiatry mm. before the end of this year, which is one of the highest impact journals in the world. A uh, great thing about that trial was it was actually designed by Professor Celia Morgan and led by her. She's head of department in the University of Exeter, which is a big university in the UK. It's one of the biggest. She works for us on a part-time basis, but the trial was actually designed at the request of the NHS. And they asked for it to be designed in a specific way so that they could get an understanding of how effective ketamine-assisted therapy could be to treat alcohol use disorder so that they are prepared to use it in due course. So it's, it's kind of a big deal. And what we're now doing is this MOU formalizes how AWAKEN the University of Exeter and the NHS can work together to bring this research forward from a successful phase 2AB trial into a pivotal phase 3 trial so that we can secure marketing authorization for ketamine assisted therapy to treat alcohol use disorder in the UK. So it has the potential to be quite significant for Awaken, but also for the industry as well. Wow. I mean, this is incredible, right? I, I, I was looking up some stats and, and I read that nearly 15 million Americans have alcohol use disorder. So you're right when you say this is kind of a big deal. I mean, I mean, it is on a on a on a life altering spectrum for so many people. Um, is it fair to say then that what is currently being done to, to try to treat alcohol use disorder just isn't working? <laughs> 
that is that is quite a fair statement to make. Um, alcohol use disorder, which is the worst type of alcohol addiction. So alcohol use disorder affects 5% of the planet. It's about 400 million people. In the US, that's about 16 or 17 million people. But there is then harmful drinking, which affects anywhere up to 15 to 17 and a half percent of the planet. So this is it. And, big, and when we big, say harmful drinking, problem. I just I just want to be clear. When we say harmful drinking, are we talking about binge drinking? Or are we talking about like moderate drinking, but but regularly? We're talking about drinking that, that negatively impacts someone's life. Gotcha. So drinking a, 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 a dr- drinking to a state that it has a negative impact on your personal life, your family, your career, something like that. And there's obviously then there's a spectrum within that. But her, alcohol use disorder is actually people who are addicted to alcohol. So 5% of the planet are addicted to alcohol. So it's about 400 million people. For alcohol use disorder, the treatment outcomes are pretty poor. Um, 75% of people who seek treatment for alcohol use disorder are back drinking within 12 months of completing treatment. And as a result of that, only 16% of people who actually have alcohol use disorder seek treatment because they know they're going to be back drinking. 875,000 Americans were admitted to hospital in the US in the last 12 months for alcohol use disorder for the second time or more. So this is a massive Mm. problem that's currently poorly treated like most other addictions, uh, an addiction is actually the single biggest unmet medical need of our times. It's the biggest treatment gap that exists from people that have these diseases to people that are actually treated and cured. Um, and so it is beholden upon us. I think I've got the kids have just, just arrived. Um, <laughs> it's beholden upon us to bring these, to develop better treatments. And to bring them. <laughs> hey, sunshine. Hey. <laughs> Sparrow's outside. Say hello to Nicole. This is Wolf. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Go on. The interview. Careful with your toes. No, no. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Come on. Push. Hey, you go. I, I will be on 10 minutes. Oh, I mean, I thought we were going to get minutes, serenaded. Okay? That would have been great. <laughs> yeah. We might get some things. I don't know if serenaded is quite. quite I was uh, hoping. We, I was hoping we were. Yeah, I was hoping maybe we'd get our own <laughs> impromptu theme song there, but alas, not the time. <laughs> um, so yeah, alcohol—it's a, a significant problem that's currently very, very, very poorly treated. Um, and so oh, what absolutely. we have is we. we, we we've, we've been licensed from the University of Exeter the output, the the outcome, the IP from that trial, and so what we're doing is. We're actually the first company in the world to deliver evidence-backed ketamine-assisted psychotherapy in our clinics that we have in the UK. But also starting next year, we're going to look to license that IP and that methodology into addiction treatment services in the US so that we can help as many individuals, families and communities as, as possible. Yeah, okay. So let's just expand on that a little bit. Can you tell me more about what Awaken's hypothesis is on how ketamine specifically can then help with addiction? I, I sure can. So if we take it first, is what are what is what is addiction? So addiction, it's it's a chronic, but currently very poorly treated disease that involves complex interactions between an individual, the brain, brain, the circuitry of the brain, someone's genetics, their life experiences, uh, and society. Um, and what it results in is is individuals repeatedly exhibiting behaviors or consuming substances that have a very very negative impact on them and their lives. And so that, that kind of key thing there is it's the brain circuits and it's life experience are the two key key themes there and it's substance and behaviors. So driven by Professor David Nutt, who's our chief research officer, who's a global authority in the area of psychedelics and addiction. Um, I think he's published over 400 papers, written 20 books. He's a head of chair, um, head of department in the university in Imperial College, and he was the former um, former advisor to the UK stage on drug policy reform. And he's also a really nice person, but very, very well named <laughs> in, in, in the industry. Um, so his, re, his research program for us, based on that 40 years, is there's essentially there's three levels in the brain. There's your lower level, your mid-level, and your upper level. Lower level is, or is, is memory for nation, memory and, 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 uh, and, um, and reward. Mid-level is salience attribution and driving, drive, your, your, your driving factors. And then upper level is your personality or your mind or cognitive part of your brain. In a steady state brain, 
the cognitive part of the brain, your personality or your mind, has control over the overall system. In a brain that has been repeatedly exposed to addictive substances or addictive behaviors, so addictive substances like alcohol, tobacco, opioids, or behaviors like gambling, uh, pornography, or, or binge eating disorder. What actually happens is the connection between memory and driver that becomes increased and the connection between driver and salience attribution or sorry, reward becomes increased as well. Mm. So the importance upon which you place on memories becomes disproportionately increased. The reward that you, you anticipate receiving from re-experiencing certain experiences becomes disproportionate. And actually, relative to the rest of the size of the brain, the cognitive part of your brain, so your personality, that part of the brain actually shrinks. And the control it has over the overall system is broken. And that is why people who are addicted, they kind of say, I, I don't know why I ended up back in the pub, but I was just back in the pub. I don't know why I went back to placing bets. I just did. Even though I know it's going to cost me my job, cost me my family, they just repeatedly do it. So what we're doing is we're using, we're developing a combined therapeutics, ther psychedelic therapeutics, so drugs and therapies to be used in combination. So we're working with MDMA and ketamine in the near term because we really like them. They disrupt the connections between those different brain circuitry systems in a way that we are particularly targeted and that we like. So for example, ketamine is very good at disrupting the connection between memory uh, and, and reward. Mm -hmm. MDMA is quite good at connect, breaking the connection or disrupting the connection, I should say, between reward and salience or, or, or uh, reward and, and, and salience attribution. And so in the space that that disruption provides, we then bring in the psychotherapy, the proprietary psychotherapy that our teams have developed over many years of experience. And that psychotherapy enables people to understand why they have either a predisposition to or have repeatedly consumed addictive substances or exhibit addictive behaviors. And sometimes it's things like trauma. So it enables people to understand that that early childhood trauma that they experienced has led them to consuming substances or, you know, in the case of gambling disorder, it can sometimes be a low dopamine production. And so the hit of dopamine that they mm -hmm. got when they placed their first bet is kind of the biggest booster of dop dopamine that they received. And that then gets locked in as a memory. And so that's why they continue to go and gamble because they're looking for that dop yeah. dopamine hit. Um, wow. So that's that's kind of the, the hypothesis that we're taking. And it's actually not a hypothesis. It was proven in research. <laughs> um, and so that gives us the ability to, to aim to treat both substance addiction and also behavior addiction which is what we're doing with the ketamine research program that has been driven by Professor Celia Morgan and Professor David Nutt within Awakened Life Sciences. Wow, Fa that's just, it's fascinating. Thank you for explaining that so, so well. I, f I have a better understanding now of, of, of this. And, you know, you, you did mention gambling um, as well as what was it, binge eating and, and pornography as these behavioral addictions. And is it true then that you're, you've initiated the world's first study on gambling addiction in particular and, and how that could be treated with ketamine? Yeah, absolutely. So, so it's, it's a study, so it's a mechanistic study rather than a clinical trial, but we believe we're the first company in the world to be assessing or to be trying to develop a pharmacological treatment for a behavioral addiction let alone the first company in the world looking at psychedelics to treat behavioral addictions. So gambling disorder affects anywhere up to 6% of the planet. So I think it's about 425 million people are affected by gambling disorder. It's, it's a debilitating disease that costs people their jobs, their families, their homes. Um, and so what we've done is we've initiated a small mechanistic study to test to see what the impact is of ketamine on the brain mechanics of people who are addicted to gambling. And so what we've done is we've developed a... So we put people in a brain scanner and they place bets on a virtual roulette wheel. And you scan the brain, you see how the, dope, you see how the brain systems fire off. We then administer ketamine and we see if there's been a re reduction in the reward or the pleasure that gambling and um, placing bets delivers. And if we are successful in that, we will then look to bring that forward into a phase 2AB trial. Or indeed, we'll look to go and, and work with other types of behavior addictions, most likely compulsive sexual behavior, which includes mm. pornography, pornography addiction. And the reason for that is Professor David Nutt 
is a global authority on gambling disorder. Uh, Celia is a European authority on gambling disorder, but she's also um, a European level authority on compulsive sexual behaviour um, and including mm. pornography addiction. So that's why we're, mm. we're looking at that. And again, pornography addiction is, is or compulsive sexual behaviour, as is the correct diagnosis, is also a, a chronic issue. We've got, you know, got, you know, teenage boys presenting with erectile, erectile dysfunction because they can no longer get a response in the real world because they're just so used to looking at pornography. So these are yeah. these are these are chronic issues that, that need need addressing. Mm. I, I I'm not sure if you are able to answer my next question or if you want to, but gambling, the alcohol industry, the pornography industry, these are industries that have, for lack of a better word, been preying on addiction. Um, or at least have allowed for these addictions to flourish, be possible. Do you foresee any pushback from some of these major industries um, as companies like Awaken start to come out with this data about how problematic this truly is and, 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 then, and then trying to cure people essentially from these addictions, which is then taking money away from other places? Yeah, listen, I, I don't want to pick a fight with anyone. Um, I, I think the issues created um, through substance and behavior addictions are well understood at a WHO level, so on a sort of an international level, but also at a, at, a, at a country level and a state level. They, these are well understood. Um, so it's not my position to, to throw stones in any particular industry. Um, what we're here to do is we're here to provide hope for individuals, families and communities for whom they do, who have a lack of hope, and they have that lack of hope because the current treatment methodologies are just not effective. So I, I would think perhaps my challenge would be more to the providers of these treatment treatments, the providers of substance addiction treatments, the providers of, of behavioural addictions. And again, I, I'm not throwing stones at them. I think they just they haven't had the tools available to be as effective as they probably want to be. They're all mostly doctors, mm. so they have a Hippocratic oath. So they're here. They're, they are in this industry because they want to help people, right? So what I want to do is I want to provide them with the tools to enable them to be more effective than they currently are. Now, there's organizations like AA and NA, and they are really important, and they're doing a really good job, but they're not as effective for all people as all people want them to be. So what we want to do is for people for whom the NA and AA isn't working, for people for whom the current talk-based mm. therapies are not working. So those people who would be in the treatment-resistant category. We want to help those people by providing new and what we believe to be more effective treatments. Well said. <laughs> Thank you very much, Anthony. This was uh, fantastic. Again, congratulations on, on the news. Uh, we'll continue to follow along. And uh, thank you for taking the time. Absolute pleasure. Take care. All right, take care.